Hi everyone, welcome to our webinar today on getting less admin and getting on with more business by using smart automation. Uh, I'm Steph Locke, part of Nightingale HQ, and uh, you can catch me on Twitter, LinkedIn, and email if you want to get in touch with me before or after, uh, well, not before the event, but during and after the event. So a little bit about me, so you know where I'm coming from when I'm talking about automation. Uh, I love automation. I like to think of myself as very lazy and easily bored. So if I ever have to do a task twice, I start thinking about how I can get a computer to do the task for me. This has led me to do a lot around um, working with data. Uh, one of my first big tasks that I was proud of was uh, writing Excel macros to help my old boss out who would open up a screen which told him how many sales we made that day um, and list them. He tallied them on a piece of paper and then typed the details up into an email and send them out. So automation has been something I've been doing for, I'm, I'm getting old now, a decade and a half almost. Uh, and I am always very keen to spread the word. And as I said, please contact me on Twitter, LinkedIn, or email if you want to uh, follow up on any of the points today. In terms of web and, uh, what we're covering today, we're looking at automation uh, generally and what it's all about to help you cut down on time that you spend on boring tasks. Usually they're boring, but they're important. Otherwise you wouldn't do them. So they still need to be done. So we're going to look at all of these topics today, starting with what is automation, going into how uh, your business can benefit from it. Look at the, some of the tools out there. Helping you think about automation. So what is the right process? What do you need to learn? There's usually some vocabulary that can be really helpful. And then what might your next steps be? So we're going to do um, this in about 30 minutes. We have a Q&A uh, panel. So if you have questions during the talk, please type in the questions as we're going and we will uh, stop between sections to pause for questions, but we'll also then have a question and answer session at the end as well. So uh, please do ask questions because this is a webinar for you, not for me. So I wanna make sure that you get the most out of it as possible. What is automation? First up, don't worry, it's not about robots. I do a lot with AI and trust me, it is not about terminators. We, we're still pretty close to have you turned it off and on again. Um, we're not talking about huge investments and big capital expenditures when we're talking about automation. Automation really is quite a practical thing and uh, it never is about putting people out of a job, in my view. Put simply, automation is using a system to perform a specific task. Uh, automation can be as simple, if you've ever seen the episode of The Simpsons, where Homer Simpson uh, set a little bird to automatically tap the yes button to say all the safety checks are passed. It doesn't have to be particularly fancy. It can be as simple as a little toy. But the idea is you have a defined task that gets performed without, without a lot of human intervention. 
fundamentally, automation is you defining the steps that a process should go through and making it so that the system can perform those steps. So if you want to automate um, the upload of your calendar to another calendar, you need to say whenever there is a new calendar entry over in this email address, perform the add calendar entry to this other uh, calendar. So you define the steps, the system performs those steps. Which means if you can't define it well, the system is going to struggle because computers do what we say, not what we mean, not what we mean. Automation is really valuable because it isn't necessarily just a very simple when this happens, do exactly this. What we're able to do is set conditions and branching logic so that in those circumstances where it depends, we can start specifying how the system can handle that. So if, for instance, a, an email comes in into your contact email address and you want to, if it's a booking query, send it to the book person who handles bookings. If it's complaint, send it to a manager. And if it's uh, spam, bin it. You can have a process that looks at the email, works out the key phrases in it, uh, even using artificial intelligence, but really simple. You could be checking for keywords like reservation. And if it finds something like reservation, it does one action. If it looks like a complaint, it performs another action. And if it's spam, if neither of the other conditions are met, it archives things. So automation can help you reflect a real business process that has multiple outcomes. And I mentioned AI, artificial intelligence. AI performs cognitive tasks that humans do, uh, but via a computer. So things like understanding what is in an image uh, and providing an automated caption or doing something like a real time translation uh, and subtitling of speech. These are all AI tasks. So we can use AI inside automation to make it more clever. But we can also put a human in the loop. There will always be times when things need humans to approve or validate something before it can go live. So this might be things like automating uh, holiday requests for staff. You want the staff to uh, be able to raise it by themselves. Automation might run it through a number of checks, things like do, do you have enough staff to cover uh, the shifts if a person requests holiday for a given day? Is it inside their holiday allowance? And if all of these checks are met, send an approval request to their line manager so that their line manager just gets an email, clicks a yes accept button, and then that triggers the data, uh, the holiday entry to be finalized. So automation isn't about cutting humans out of the loop. It's about leaving humans to do the things that humans are good at and using computers to do all the boring stuff. You'll also hear the phrase robotic process automation. As well as the automation that might happen between systems, sometimes you might have a really old piece of software like an inventory solution or an insurance application or something that 
hasn't made its way onto the cloud, is maybe kind of rocking the green text on a black background kind of look and has to have a person performing tasks. Robotic process automation is about acting as a human clicking things on screen and extracting the data that's generated and doing something with it. So it's kind of an Excel macro on steroids where it mimics a person. Many small businesses these days work primarily in the cloud. So you might have bookkeeping software like Xero or QuickBooks. You might have your office apps in the cloud. You'll have cloud storage like OneDrive or Dropbox. Uh, you'll use scheduling systems and booking apps and things, and they'll all be in the cloud. Uh, and most of that can work with standard automation. But if you have anything that has those old desktop install things, you'll want to look a bit more at robotic process automation. So that is kind of a quick uh, rundown on what automation is. Ruth, do we have any questions at this point? Not right now, Steph, no. Nope. Awesome. The big question really that I hope most people are here today to learn about is, how can my business benefit from automation? What is the point and how does it impact my day to day? Uh, one of the key things is that business, uh, consumers and customers of businesses are primarily in the digital space these days. And as businesses, we all have usually something beyond uh, piece, uh, pieces of paper that are online. So there's been uh, this figure has gone up and I need to update it. We were talking to the Federation of Small Businesses the other day and there are 5.8 million small businesses that have uh, been financially impacted by the pandemic. So with COVID-19 uh, having impacted businesses, a lot of people who thought my business isn't right for online uh, and automation and uh, kind of doing things in a more digital space have realized that to be able to keep going on and post pandemic, how we're going to need to do things having online systems like booking systems, chatbots, emails, social media, all of these things are going to start being more important. People aren't going to want print out receipts, they're going to want them emailed to them. So we're facing a point where automation is really critical for a lot of businesses particularly ones that maybe didn't need uh, a digital space and automation in that respect before. Looking at the figures from uh, different sources, one source cites that 80% of repetitive tasks can be automated. So this can be things from uh, checking the correct temperature in the fridge through to whenever there is a new blog entry from a must read uh, kind of SEO consultant, having that send you a quick tweet. There's all sorts of tasks that can be automated and uh, this follows kind of the 80-20 Pareto principle where 20% um, of customers usually deliver 80% of the value uh, and revenue for your company. 
And we can think about that with our time as well. Twen like one in five hours we spend in a day is probably the valuable hour. It's the one where we think about what our business should be doing. We think about new ideas. We think about ways to save money. We bring on a new person. All of these things help us build our businesses, but the stuff like reconciling our bank accounts, that, that, that repetitive task doesn't really add much value, but it has to be done for audit purposes. So we can really get rid of a lot of tasks like that, that kind of are essential, but not important. Uh, sorry, are essential, but not interesting. Coming back to our customers, more than half of uh, your customers are using social media daily. The vast majority of people really now actually prefer to complain over social media uh, to a company than phone them or send a complaint via email or via a website. Be, having a digital presence is important because people expect it, but when people have something like five social media accounts on average, you cannot be in all of those places at once. So automation can help you be online, be where your customers expect, be there 24 seven without you having to actually physically go without sleep to be there. So automation is really critical for helping in a digital space and help it be more manageable and help you stay sane through uh, avoiding burnout and excess work. The stats uh, are really interesting, they stack up. So yes, 80% of tasks could potentially be automated, but most people, most employees think that they could easily cut out an hour a day of automated tasks. If you have um, 10 staff, they, if you could save each one of those staff an hour a day, you suddenly have 50 extra hours a week of people's time. That's, that's like one and a half new hires. If you could grow your headcount by that without paying that extra cash and not have to go through the hiring process and get people up to speed, how much more awesome would your business be for that extra time? So it's really important to be thinking about automation for helping you make your staff have an outsized benefit relative to their number of hours. And also yourself as a business leader. Uh, the study and the, the green speech mark, when you get these slides, the green speech marks are clickable, so you can go and read the report. A lot of business leaders have worked out that they could save nine weeks, nine work weeks of time every year from automation. That could mean a ho uh, more holidays, more business growth opportunities, uh, or stronger cover for your employees. So automation gives you a lot of free time. And when it's, do when it's doing the right thing correctly, it can really reduce error. So it can help improve quality and improving quality, say, cuts out rework time as well. We can use this to make new experiences for our customers. So before uh, I set up Nightingale with Roof, we, um, I run my own consultancy. Uh, and I hate that admin work. So one of the things that I've done to make it easy for customers is have an online booking solution where it's plugged into my calendar. So only slots that I have the time for can be booked. So I never double book. And people can actually 
pay for the pay for the service in advance. And we'll look a little bit later on at the uh, automation behind that, but we make an easy booking experience, automated payment, and also then go on to send them their customized contract digitally so that they can sign it to make sure that intellectual property, GDPR, and all of those things are covered. So we can give customers an exper uh, a great experience and dramatically cut down on internal time to deliver that. We can also use automation uh, to help us be more nimble and find information online that otherwise we would have to spend a lot of time looking for. Uh, so Ruth uh, is responsible for a lot more of the kind of the business side and helping us grow as an organization. And PR is a key part of that for us. We're always on the lookout for how we can help journalists and people uh, discuss AI in terms of getting ready for it and it being a people problem. So we use automation to find the relevant requests uh, for contributions online without Roof having to monitor them all. And we send Roof an email with the journalists details, associated websites and stuff so that as soon as a journalist has requested uh, a response, Roof can be getting that email and working out whether it's worth our time to get in touch. So we can really uh, help blend systems together, but also use systems to get an advantage that uh, manual labor simply can't achieve. An interesting concept um, that's emerging in the workplace at the moment is what's called human plus. So it is about helping your people do more using technology. More than uh, almost half of business leaders think that most of this staff are going to have to be more technologically savvy in the next few years for their business to continue growing. What with um, post pandemic businesses that have traditionally been very people intensive and not very manual uh, and very manual uh, things like service industry. When we're talking about digital bookings uh, and ordering systems, con uh, more smooth contactless payment methods, uh, being able to send receipts and digital reminders and contact and work with people on Instagram and all sorts of different things now. You, there's going to be a big skills adoption that's needed to be able to handle that. That new skill adoption and challenge is actually uh, ranked second below pay for a key motivation for millennial employees. So I'm a millennial. Millennial doesn't apply to like under 25s. It's not a new word for youngins. Um, but people like to test themselves and grow and be prepared. So being an organization that is adopting new technology can help you retain staff and be more attractive to new hires. And the automation also is really valuable because now the average employee only lasts at a company for less than four years. For knowledge workers and technical staff, that drops quite significantly down to about two or three years. So you spend a lot of time investing in staff, skilling them up, building a lot of domain knowledge, uh, getting them doing processes very manually and then they leave, you lose a lot of institutional knowledge about how your business works. 
encouraging people to automate helps your business be more resilient to people leaving. It also means that new people have to spend less time learning lots of little processes and they can start sooner adding the value in the important areas. So it's worth thinking about over the next few years is how technology can make your business more attractive to new staff, how it can be uh, useful for keeping up with demands and can help you be a more resilient business. Any questions on uh, business benefits? So Steph, we have we just have someone here who is in uh, career training slash services and they're helping people do better job interviews and to write better applications and CVs. Mm -hmm. And they have just this week moved their business from half physical, uh, half online to fully online. Um, so that's the industry that they're in. I've just asked them, is there any areas that they want to automate in particular? But I would say from my point of view, from the PR perspective example that Steph just gave, um, that could be quite useful to you. And we see ourselves as thought leaders. So I was able to get emails, uh, get an email notification of um, media contacts who wanted uh, in specifically um, how automation impacts SMEs. And I was able to go onto Twitter and say that I was going to send them an email and they all, all three quality. We had someone from Wired, we had someone from FinTech News get back to us as well. So for you, if you were to set that up, you could be waiting for notifications on uh, from media journalists on the latest on careers or some, uh, some piece of specific training that's um, your specialty as well. So I think that could be could could, could be interesting. Uh, Steph, there was another question about how easy or affordable it is for a small company to add a chatbot to their existing website or social media handles. Uh, that that is a great question for us uh, because we have a, a new well, with Go Smarter the initiative that we're able to bring to SMEs uh, thanks to Innovate UK funding. One of the things we're going to be helping businesses do is deploy a chatbot that can uh, help answer lots of the simple questions, lots of the commonly asked questions. And we're actually looking at making that basically free, like even the implementation and the Azure host uh, and the Microsoft hosting will be free unless the bot gets really, really heavily used. So if you start becoming super successful, you'll have to pay a bit. But otherwise, if it's just for the odd query every day or so, it'll be entirely free. So chatbots do not have to cost the earth. You do not need a lot of techie knowledge to be able to implement them. So you don't have any of that extra consultancy setup costs to think about so it can be really cost effective um very good uh so our training contact here has gone and checked out uh, journo uh request that we mentioned are you going to go through steps the setup of that particular tool or how would they go about doing it i am i will show you how that set up in okay. the next section. All right, super. OK, uh, and look, guys, for you listening here today, if get all of the, you know, all of the questions or how we can help you uh, on your automation journey, get them all out now or contact us outside of the webinar as well. We'll, we'll gladly guide you. There is a, a very interesting question here and I want to know the answer to this as well or more a comment. The holy grail for me is automating writing. I've looked at a few Python type things, but it's tricky. Hmm. Is that? Yeah, so um, th there's a couple of areas that are under active development right now. Um, one is copywriting uh, automation. So how do you help scaffold things like product descriptions for e-commerce and things like that more easily? 
Um, and we might do, I might get Mia, our uh, data science apprentice, to do a follow up technical session because one of the things on that that we've tried out is a tool to based on pictures, start generating captions that includes things like the color of the dress and the or, uh, and the kind of like the line and things like that. Another area where if you want to go down the rabbit hole on this is starting to actually automate the writing of technical code. So providing a, re a natural language language description of what you want to achieve and based on uh, having looked at lots and lots of code samples it will actually generate an initial Python uh, code block that might achieve what you are trying to do. So there's uh, some really interesting um, advances that are happening right now still not quite commercialized so not easy for SMEs to just kind of buy, but there is work going on on helping scale effective copywriting and effective coding as well. All very interesting stuff. Great stuff. That's it for the moment. So what tools can we be using to start doing automation as a small bit, small medium business, uh, and how do we keep the costs low? So one of the, I'm going to cover three tools. One of the key tools that uh, I'm a big fan of is the Microsoft Power Automate solution. Uh, and here is the workflow for the journal request. So we have uh, what's called a trigger. So uh, any process starts via an event, whether that's somebody manually saying this process needs to happen, somebody sending in a holiday request, or in our case, when a tweet appears that meets our requirements. So we're looking for tweets with the journal request hashtag, but also ones that suggest it's relevant to us so it mentions data science, AI, um, or R. We then do a quick check. Is it an original tweet? Because nobody wants to reply to a retweet. We always only want the original ones. Uh, and if a tweet gets retweeted, we really don't want that to be triggering lots of emails. Uh, so we then get some information about the user and then we send an email and we're able to drag and drop the fields from the original tweet and the user to be able to fill in that detail. So uh, all of it is right there. So Power Automate as a solution uh, is um, pay per user. There's a free version, uh, but you can get extra uh, connectors so you can plug into more systems and things with the paid version. Most of these tools are in that freemium space, so you can do simple things for free. You can do more advanced things um, with a monthly subscription. Again, all the green things are kind of clickable, so the little website and docs uh, and book links will take you to the website and to the help spaces and frequently asked questions and things. Uh, Power Automate is very good, particularly if you do if you do a lot with documents and spreadsheets and um, if you're already in that Microsoft space but it, it's very good at kind of the back office tasks. Another alternative, and I use all of these, by the way, uh, another alternative is Zapier. Zapier is uh, very good at stitching together lots of the online little services that you might use. So this is the, uh, is 
the kind of minimized view about what happens when uh, somebody books some consultant paid consultancy time on my website. So if we get an event, first of all, we check and make sure that it's a paid event. If it is, we send some stuff to PandaDoc, which is my digital contract platform. I then get a message in Slack so I can make sure that the contract's generated and so that I can go, woohoo, somebody paid me. Uh, and then I sync the, their data to HubSpot, my uh, customer relationship management system, so I can track that they have uh, that they're a revenue generating customer. Sapia, uh, for something like this, where we have multiple steps, is, uh, is the paid monthly version, but you can do a very simple, if something, do something for free. And then the other final one that is very popular is IFT, which is if this, then that, which tells you what it does. And this is one of my uh, earlier automations where every time we would post a, uh, post a blog entry, we would write that entry into a spreadsheet and that would help us then do things like programmatically generate tweets to go and schedule them in. Uh, if also had um, hue light bulb integrations. So if you have the uh, if you have uh, smart bulbs and stuff in your house, which can change color and things by an app. Uh, I had a lot of fun with my spouse by setting up an automation so that whenever I tweeted, it would change all the color, all, all the lights in the house to a random color. I was kind at least to say that that was happening in advance, uh, but you can do all sorts of weird and wacky things with automation. Um, and actually that sounds like that was a very fun example, but people have taken that capability now and are doing things like when they're working and they're in an online call, when their calendar status changes, it it triggers a, a light color change so that a light just outside the door turns red so that people know not to come in and disturb them um, and like let kids run about and things like that. So it doesn't just have to be for practical purposes, it can be for fun, but you can use any of this automation techniques in really interesting ways to meet whatever your requirement is. None of these tools do all of the things. They all have different strengths. Uh, and as I said, I use all of them at different times. Um, it's one of those things that usually you'll want to do a bit of experimenting. They're also not mutually exclusive, so you can use all three. Um, but you might find one works a bit better with how your organization works than the others. So don't worry if one isn't perfect, try the other. It's not a problem. Any questions on tools? Uh, no questions, Steph, but just while you're there, would you, um, on a practical sense, just expand out on the booking system for you? Because I think this is useful for many businesses across many different industries. And um, what I'm curious about is when someone goes on to your Lockdale consultancy site and they'll see a range of options from you know, the free half hour that you can have a chat with them to three hours um, consultation around data problems and so on. Um, what's the process for you? Would you usually have a free chat with someone and then if they want to progress this you, for, for the automation sake, would you ask them to go back on and book it through the system that you have or how does that work? 
Most uh, consultancy engagements start with a free half an hour talk. Um, and then the, the probably about 20% of the business would go through the automation, uh, but I had other automation to help with uh, kind of the, the bigger cases. So if somebody wanted, um, if somebody wanted, for instance, a data science readiness review, that would be a multi day engagement where uh, back in the day I'd even go on site and be in a physical space with other people. Um, wow, February was a long time ago. Um, and we would uh, to help support that. I would use tools like Microsoft find a time poll where I could set up multiple days in a row to say the, these are the time slots that I have uh, and businesses would uh, they would get provisionally booked in my calendar. So again, I couldn't double book and then the uh, customer would be able to say, yeah, this is this is the time slot that works for me. That would remove all the holds on my calendar, confirm the entry, and then uh, I could I'd have different automation that can kick off based on that event happening to do things like prepare an invoice in uh, in zero my bookkeeping software, generate a contract for me to review and get ready to send out and things like that. So. I have lots of other kind of mini automations and integrations between systems that help minimize the amount of effort that I would have to go to to kind of schedule and arrange work. And in fact, uh, I do a lot of generally cutting out of as much meeting booking stuff as possible by having online scheduling system. So I've got Calendly, I've got the Microsoft Finder time and I've got a HubSpot's meeting facility as well. So I can uh, send somebody the, the best fit uh, way of booking my time. It meets all my requirements around breaks and how many meetings I'm willing to have in a day and things like that. Um, and then I have things that sync calendars across multiple email addresses and stuff. So it all built up over a couple of years as I found new requirements that I had to meet, but all my systems play nicely with each other to save me a lot of time. And that's the secret sauce here that we're going to share as well, how you get that full integration. So someone has said that Calendly is great. It is a great tool. Um, but you can, like you have just done there, you integrate it into your accountancy package. When someone books you, that part is all automated. You don't have to deal with these tasks separately. Uh, another comment in here I found, is it IFTTT, if T, has, if. Become, <laughs> has become less reliable over the years. Would you agree? I certainly don't use it as much as Zapier or my or Power Automate. Um, it's it's still a little easier sometimes to get things done in it, but um, I think the other two have had a more sustained investment uh, in it. Zapier is probably the market leader um kind of from from a startup perspective and power automate is market leader around kind of office productivity and kind of organizations with a lot of knowledge workers so that if there's kind of lagging behind for me a bit and but we'll move on now, step. But Sean just chimed in there and said that he definitely found FT to be a lot, a lot uh, to have a lot of unreliable um, uh, recipe. 
Yeah, the recipe. Uh, so a lot of these tools have templates that might be contributed by uh, software vendors or individuals. And if the connectors and integrations aren't kept up to date, uh, you can end up with things not working as expected. So having something that has a more sustained developer and kind of uh, update environment around it, like Zapier and Power Automate, can give you a lot more um, reassurance that things will stay working for a long time. Because you want to, if you're going to automate something, you want to make sure that it is automated and it doesn't work. But we will look on that uh, actually just now. So when we're looking at automating things, how should we actually go about doing it? Because saying use a tool, uh, there's a big gap between wanting to automate something and making it so. So the first thing that I recommend anybody does is actually think about what tasks you have uh, inside your business uh, or in your day to day that can potentially be automated. Uh, but you think about how much time do you spend on it? How frequently do you have to do it? And what is the value of that task? You could write down all of your all of the processes and put some values in and do some ranking around these with a spreadsheet. Uh, but what you're really looking for as some of the first things to automate is things that don't even necessarily have to take a lot of time, happen pretty frequently and don't necessarily add a huge amount of value. What I've generally found is don't go and automate the things that are most critical, like your relationship with your customers or the value that you add, because those human things are where your business needs people. But as a consultant, that means I might not, I might automate some of the things that make me more effective at delivering billable work, but the thing that adds the least amount of value is the non billable administration. So I automate that because it takes time. It happens frequently and it doesn't add core value to my business. It also means that if it goes a bit wrong because you should because sometimes things go wrong. If it does go wrong, I'm not hurting my customer relationship. So it's good to think about what is the right things to start automating. You should then work out what the process is. Should be able to draw a little flow chart on a uh, on a piece of paper that describes what happens in the process. So that could be we fill in an online order form for stationery at staples. We then receive uh, an email with a tracking code. Somebody then looks up the tracking code and adds in a log for the receptionist to say on this day expect a delivery from TNT. When the receptionist gets the, the stationery, they send an email saying your stationery has arrived and then somebody picks it up and manually updates the stationary spreadsheets. That could be the process. So if you can sketch that out on paper, then you can make sure that uh, that accurately describes the process. So you can get the receptionist to look at it and make sure that the bits uh, match up what uh, the receptionist expected to do. Once you've got the process well documented, 
you can then question, is it the right thing to do? So just because that's the way we did it, do we want to automate it as is, or can we rearrange this? Can we make the process better? So for instance, with, the, with that stationary example, which involves the receptionist and picking things up and updating spreadsheets, um, yes, you could automate the updating of the spreadsheet based on um, somebody uh, receiving the goods, but perhaps you could uh, set that so that when the inventory change things around, so instead of people having to do a weekly stationary run where they work out from the inventory what's needed and buy it and then go through that process, actually once a day the inventory gets checked for low stock and sends a message and then sends the receptionist the relevant notification to expect stock. So once you have something documented, question whether it's the right way of doing things. It could also be like process automating the response to a customer query. You could keep doing things with email or you could look at techniques like chatbots as a way of reducing the amount of emails you get in the first place and speeding up the value for the customer. So take the time to think about whether you could be doing things a better way. Then make it so. Get out your iPad, get out your laptop, start building that automated process. And most importantly, make sure you're keeping an eye, particularly at the beginning, on the automation, that it is doing the right thing at the right time. Because computers do what we say, not what we meant. So if you've done something a little bit wrong or misunderstood something, you might not be getting the right outcome. So make sure to check in. It's been running for a day, log in. You can look through all the history, see what it did, track things through and make sure that it's doing it correctly. So monitoring it on it is an important ongoing piece for making sure that your business is operating effectively. Any questions on the process uh, of automating? No, we're all good. If automation is new to you, particularly in this digital space, there might be a few things that are uh, that you're, it's helpful for you to pick up. You're probably going to need to get, uh, not probably, definitely going to need to get comfortable with some of the terminology that most of these systems use. So one is a trigger. Uh, a trigger is what kicks off the process. Is it a tweet, an email? Is it somebody pushing a button? Then you have connectors. These will be where you add in your credentials uh, for Twitter or for your email or for Xero or whatever, because without those authorized connections to process uh, to systems, you can't automate interactions with them. And then conditions. So conditions are the uh, the filters that you're going to need to apply. So understanding uh, and and or, it sounds a little silly, but you start having to work on a really rigid logic system. So understanding those conditions starts becoming uh, quite important to getting the right process described. And whilst you do not need to be a techie to do uh, most automation, 
uh, you might start finding that you start hitting on some of the terminology because not everything, not every system is well, uh, has nice, easy connectors to use. So first off, you've got your data. You'll have data inside individual systems and you might also be keeping some of your data inside a spreadsheet or a database or something. So uh, data is basically just any information that has been stored. Events is the general term uh, for the things that kick off triggers. So something like a tweet being sent is an event. And then finally, uh, an API, which is an automatic program interface. An API is basically like a website for other computers. It doesn't have any of the pretty things that we need as humans. It just has the bare information. And like with websites and apps, uh, sometimes APIs will need uh, authentication. So they'll need logins and things like that to be able to talk to each other. So if you find that a system doesn't automate very easily, with the connectors that are available inside um, Power Automate or Zapier or IFT, then it might be that uh, an API is available, at which point there are quite a few techies who can do things uh, to, to automate for you, or you might want to go and do a bit of learning yourself not always not for the faint of heart but it is doable and then the other final option uh, is if it doesn't have an api that might be where the robotic process automation comes in and uh, power automate has an rpa option so you can have power automate running on your desktop and acting on your behalf with systems. You'll need a little bit of a mindset shift. Uh, so you cannot automate your business overnight. And a lot of people won't trust internally in your business, won't trust a lot of automation that happens at once. So start small, try it out, learn and change uh, and build up a new mindset. And a big part of that is an experimental mindset. So not everything that you endeavor to automate will automate easily. Quite often you might not be able to get 100% of the task automated that isn't a failure, that is an experiment or a partial success. So you end up needing to be uh, a bit more experimental about how you approach things and you have to uh, be willing to play with the tech, to press the buttons to see, oh, if I click that button, what does it do? experimenting with tech and making sure that you put like some safety rails around yourself when you do so is important to helping you change your approach and delivering automation successfully. Any questions on the vocabulary and uh, some of the things that you might encounter? when automating. We're all good now at the moment. OK, so what next? Um, if you're interested in continuing to learn about automation, we're going into detail in five different areas of automation and engagement over the next five weeks. So we're going to be talking about automation of back office processes like uh, 
receiving and paying invoices, uh, building FAQ chatbots to help customers, um, automating your social media. So we're going to be going into these in detail. All the webinars like this one are free for you to sign up for. Uh, you can check them out at nightingalehq.eventbrite.com. Uh, and yeah, similar format to this one. And we all, no nonsense, no extra sales or tech stuff, just kind of th this is how this can add value to your business. If we've inspired you to try and kind of take a load off for, through automation. Uh, if you're not already, you can actually get on our wait list for Go Smarter. Go Smarter is going to do the guided, is going to guide you through the setup of these automation tools of social listening and the invoicing and all of these things and give you extra content to help you understand in detail what you set up and how you can expand on it. And my goal, not that I actually do this very often, because as soon as I uh, is for you to have more time for a cup of coffee. Uh, although I found that as soon as I automate one task, I'm on to adding more stuff to my to do list. So uh, take a break or do more things once you've automated some of the boring tasks. Thank you all very much for coming along today. I talked for a bit longer than I had uh, anticipated, um, but I am still very happy to answer any questions that people have. Um, I'm here for you. Thanks, Steph, for that. And um... Uh, I just thought it was great that you talked about the mindset as well and also you know for SMEs who are joining us who are not particularly technical this is for that non-tech audience to jump on board as well so when you talk about that guided support to get the tools up and running and adding value it's for that audience uh, also so uh, what do you have to say just a last note on that you know someone who thinks it's not for me because I'm not technically minded or I'll get lost in it. We are trying to make it as easy as possible. So uh, we're looking at the the automation piece at the moment uh, and are building something for businesses that have uh, inventory and stock and need a way to be able to manage that maybe a bit better than on paper or on email uh, or on a spreadsheet. And to set that up, we'll be asking uh, people to sign up for Power Automate, easy process, Microsoft make that as simple as possible. And then we all have one drop down, which you need to provide some info on, which is where would you like this inventory app hosted in the world and then we'll have a button to set it up and then that'll all go away we'll do all the hard work and then give you a nice link to go and view your inventory app so you can start filling in the information so we're really trying to make it as easy as possible for you to have something that works and then a lot of knowledge that you can pick up to go and help you extend the solutions and customize them to your needs, but with as minimal initial knowledge required as possible. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, I think it's a wrap. Thanks, Steph. Thanks everyone for joining us. Thank you, everyone. It's been a pleasure uh, helping you with automation today.